I've not seen my wife and kids for nearly a year and after a long plan and well anticipated journey, I had to cancel my trip to Ghana for 30 December for this strange spiritual reason. Or was it a coincidence? Hear me out and help me decide. What is that? My name is Mickey. Keep watching. Ta-da! I am in Ghana. Yeah, um, but it's in January. Yeah, it wasn't... I think I flopped myself out. <laughs> in the quest of making a good video, um, I think I flopped myself out. I'll, I'll have to try and see if I can get back in using the other doors. Hopefully they'll be open. If not, I'll have to wait. Um, but yeah, we saw that one out. Yeah, I am in Ghana, um, but it's in January. Um, the initial plan was to come to Ghana in December, you know, for 30 December, that's the best time to come to Ghana. Um, but something weird happened, that's why I'm making this video, and I want you to judge if this is just by divine intervention, why I miss Ghana, or I'm just being superstitious. But before I get into the story, I want to set this record straight. Um, I think a few videos that I made uh, during last year, 2023, it made it seem that I permanently live in Ghana. I personally don't live in Ghana permanently, but my wife and kids who were with me, all my kids were born in Middlesbrough, um, they live in Ghana now. It's getting to two years since they left the UK. Um, I am in the British Army, something that I've, I've you know, heard um, and I've taken away from my channel. Um, I don't know why I do that, but I just think it would be good if I don't let people know that I am in the British Army. But hey, that's me saying it. But because I've said it now, I'm going to say that every assertion I've made on this channel is my opinion and it's not the representation of the British Army. So yeah, that out of the way. Um, yeah, my wife and kids live in Ghana and I come here uh, all the time, you know. Um, I'm waiting to get through my contract with the army and then I will move to Ghana. And this will take me like three to five years. You know, living in Ghana is not child play. So anything that will help your stay in Ghana to be good and perfect is good. But for me, my peace is in Ghana. I love Ghana so much and I cannot wait to live here permanently. But before that, I am going to be showing you the moving process and how people who've moved here are making moves and how they are surviving. Whilst I'm showing myself, teaching myself how to do it, I'm also going to bring you along so that if, you, if it's in your interest to move to Ghana, then you have a place to reference. Now let's get into the story. When I was in secondary school, when there is a week for me to come home, um, I had this mantra that I said last days are always dangerous. So even when people told me, let's go and do something in town, I wouldn't go to town just in case I, get, I, I fall in trouble. So I'll cover myself in cotton wool. And it's something that I've lived by, even in the British Army. So a week before I come to Ghana, I try not to even do PT, any rigorous exercises so that I come intact. I come to Ghana intact. But this time around, I don't know what came over me. Um, there is a tradition in the British Army where at the end of every Christmas, before we break for Christmas break, we will play a game called um, Senior versus Junior. Sometimes we play in rugby and then we play in football. And I love football. So I was playing for the seniors. And I remember during that week, one of my you know, guys who worked for me did a surgery on his knee. And because of that, he's not, he's from Caribbean. He's not been home for like a year. And he was telling me how if you get injured, um, the hospital will tell you to stay in UK because you will be in, uh, at a risk of blood clots if you sit down for a long time. And it's, it takes six hours on a flight to come to, to Ghana. So he said he's not. I remember listening to him and going, wow, imagine that happened to me. So yeah, I need to cover myself in cotton wool. Well, on the, at this game, I was the linesman for some weird reason. I wanted to play this game and it was, it was a fierce game, you know, tackles were flying everywhere. And I remember uh, the day started with me being a linesman, so I was running the lines officiating. I should have stayed there. 
Um, one of our teammates was playing and he was getting tired. So they were like, oh, AJ, you will be, so they call me AJ at work, you will be replacing him. And that time happened and then he was supposed to leave and then I'll come and replace him. But he wasn't leaving the game. I remember a friend of mine, one of my colleagues coming in and going, why isn't he allowing you to play? I remember saying that maybe it's a blessing in this guys because I am to fly the next week home and I cannot afford to injure myself. Guess what? As soon as I finished saying that he left the game, I went in. I only played for five minutes. I touched the ball like three times. So I'm a, I play in defense. I've taken the ball and I'm transitioning into midfield. And from the back, someone hit me at my right ankle. And it was a very heavy lift. But people thought it wasn't that um, serious. And I remember them saying, oh, get up and walk it off. Stop being weak and all those, you know, how soldiers talk. But no, I felt like something isn't right. So they rushed me to the hospital and then they did their first assessment and they were like, nah, you need to get x-ray. So I went to x-ray and then the nurse was like, um, the consultant want to speak to you. When a consultant want to speak to you in the UK, you know that it's a very you know, serious um, incident. Anyway, she comes to me and she's like, we will need to do a surgery on your ankle. It's like, how? So what has happened is I've broken my fibula at the knee level and then at your ankle joint, they call it, uh, this, I think it's called syndesmosis. Um, so you've got your tibia and your fibula and then you have your feet. That joint over there has come apart and they've, you know, it's been separated. So I've damaged my syndesmosis. So what they have to do is, if this is my leg, they will have to cut both sides, drill through, so two holes through my fib, uh, fibula and then the tibia. And then they'll put something they call the, a tight rope to bring them together. So she said, I need to do that. I'm like, oh, I need to go home. I need to see my family. I've been planning this for year, you know, for the whole year. I've not seen them. And I've done a lot of missions and that. And this is the time I need to come home and see my family. She said, how, how long are you going for? And I told her, I'm going for five weeks. She said, nah, if you go, um, it's going to heal funny and you are going to have complication all your life. So I had to cancel it. So I was locked in a home alone in a single room, alone in UK, cold UK, during Christmas. And it wasn't, it wasn't fun. So if you've not seen me on YouTube for nearly a month, uh, no, nearly two months now, then that is the reason why. Anytime I sat, I sat up, my feet will swell. Um, so I had to cancel my flight because I had to inject myself with blood tennis. Let me use that word, blood tennis, um, because I was under the risk of um, blood clots. So I was told that I, I, I could only come home after six weeks. Now, this is where it gets funny. Hear me out. This is where it gets funny. Before I got injured, let's go back. Before I got injured, right? My uncle, who lives in Manchester, uh, he's a pastor, so he's a priest. Um, he called me. We've not spoken for like over two years. He called me and he's like, I need to talk to you. I was like, oh my God, if you are a Ghanaian or if you are an African and you have uncles, aunties in UK and you've not spoken to them in a long time and they call you and they say, we need to speak to you. You know that you know, they are going to talk to you really bad about how you're not calling them and that anyway. So I thought that was how it's going to be. It's like, no, this is not like that. I had a dream that you've gone to Ghana. Remember, he, that, he didn't know that I was planning to go to Ghana. And he said he had a dream that I've gone to Ghana and I was crashed in a road traffic accident. Normally, I will call my wife and I'll say, you know what, this is the vision that um, someone told me. Let's pray about it. But this one, got to me, I don't know, I was worried. I lost sleep on this one because I had planned to come to Ghana, something he didn't know. The thing was, I have a lot of people on hold in Ghana, so I've booked a lot of appointments to interview a lot of people in Accra. So the plan was, my wife was to bring my car to Accra. We stay in Accra for a week, and then I'll drive 
on the Accra Kumasi Road on the 20th of December to come to Kumasi. Uh, this is where we live. We live in Kumasi, right? And if you are a Ghanaian, you know that the Accra Kumasi Road during Christmas can be a bit dangerous for some reason. I don't know what it is with December. There will be a lot of accidents going on. Um, so I was thinking, wow, okay, so when I come to Ghana, um, do I suck the plan of my wife bringing my car? Um, and then maybe we board the flight and then we come to Kumase? I don't know. So it, it means that if I came to Kumase during Christmas or if I came to Ghana during Christmas, everything I did, it would have, it would have been at the back of my mind that, what if I get an accident, you know? So I think my stay in December would have been a bit weird. So I'm contemplating, should I postpone my stay, you know? Should I postpone the trip? But I don't want to lose money canceling the flight too. So now I went against my will, I went against my practice to go and play this game and now I've been forced by illness, you know, by me breaking my foot to cancel the flight. What do you think? Do you think the Most High was trying to save me? What do you think? Or am I just being superstitious? I told a friend of mine and what he said was, well, if God wanted to save you, he could have used a less painful way to save you. So yeah, I canceled my flight and then first two weeks I was in cast it was so painful you know I was drugged up with codeine and I would blood thinner every morning injecting myself and then after two weeks they went and cut it gave me um, a fracture walker boot um, this boot that you wear and then yeah after six weeks I was in boots and British Airways brought me to Ghana and it was amazing and that's why I'm here and I've not posted since I've been here um, yeah, I got my car in Accra. I've spoken to a lot of people. Um, so I've got a lot of interviews and a lot of content coming your way. Now I can actually walk. Um, it's healed. I've got this, uh, this war wound to tell the story when I'm old. So this is why I've not posted in a long time. Let me know in the comment section, what do you think? Was I, am I being saved by the Most High? Or am I just being superstitious? Follow me for more content from Ghana. It's going to be lit. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to come on my journey of experience. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye. Oh man. Let me see how I can enter this house again. <laughs>